Thank you very much, uh, Monisha. Thank you very much, the Sutra team, for having me here. Um, with 20 minutes, it's going to be quite a bit of a race. <laughs> My topic is on uh, green indigo. Well, indigo is usually blue, but I'm introducing this term green indigo because it is unfermented indigo, an indigo which is traditionally practiced by the Iban people of Sarawak in Malaysian Borneo. It is unfermented, it is using Mustania tinctoria. Do I point here or do I point there? Okay, this is what our tarum, the name, Mustania tinctoria looks like. And here you can see where we come from, which is in the island of Borneo, south of Thailand, north of Sumatra, north of Java, and neighbors to the Philippines. And the weavers come from this area in the hinterland, right in the heart of Borneo. This is what the traditional hand-woven wap ikat textiles known as puakumbu are used in the old days. They are used to define sacred spaces for decoration, as woven skirts for the ladies, as jackets for the chiefs. Also, as you can see on the floor here, to define sacred spaces of offering to the gods. So it has developed into a high art of culture because it is actually a sacred cloth and it is known also as a woven dream. And we like to use the term ties that bind, because like any resist process, the way and the way you can expertly tie your motives will define clearly the way the cloth will turn out to be. So here is one whereby it's a, it's a beautiful story about the ties that bind, because the curl, which is very typical of the Iban cloth, I'm trying to uh, still, is defined by all these spirals, and the spirals must be smaller than a lady's thumb. I wouldn't go too much into this, but I'd like to say that in most of Iban traditional textiles, indigo is an excellent color. It is not the main color. The main color is like the color of dried blood. This is what the traditional cotton textiles aspire to be because they were cloth associated topmost with head hunting rituals. So I'm focusing on Sungai Kain. Kain means cloth, Sungai means river, the river of cloth, and they live in long houses, which is the original, if you like, condominium, where everybody has a shared space, a communal space but everybody has their own private apartments, which are known as bilik. So the way in which the modern team of the cotton, I'm relating it to our earlier sessions where everybody's talking about cotton, <clears throat> but cotton has to have its pores open as a fiber by which they soak ritually into a modern bath known as ngar, comprising of traditional nut oils, gingers, and palm salts. So that ceremony was done by the dye master, and that ceremony in the old days was known as ngar, the war path of the women. Here they are covering their heads when they have to boil the moderns outside, pounding the gingers and nut oils, and the main color of the brick red comes from not the fruit of the Morinda citrifolia, but the roots. Indu Nakal Indu Ngar is the title given to the Dai Master, she who knows all the secret ingredients to put into making this special Dai bath, or modern bath. And Ngar brings the women weavers together it's such a sacred and uh, important activity traditionally in the longhouse community. 
Here they thoroughly mix the cotton yarn into big uh, wooden troughs made out of ironwood. So it is very interesting, the whole ceremony, where at the end of the successful ritual, the dye master leads the whole women group into marching around the troughs of yarn, declaring the victory that they've won the war, with a sword in one hand, defining that it's battle, with a palm leaf, or rather a ginger leaf in the other hand, saying that peace be upon the yarn. This is uh, Bangi, the dye master and the master weaver on the right. The roots of the Morinda citrifolia. Again here, the indigo leaves, the tarum. And this is the yellow dye, which is from a wild vine known as Akapenawal Landak, or Fibrauria tinctoria. Here. Weaving an Iban Puakumbu Wap Ika textile on a backstrap loom on the floor. Ties that bind. Here you have the first tie on the stretch out yarn. The first tie to preserve the first design. Then, then it is dipped into the Morinda dye. So here you have the Morinda dye. Now you tie over the Morinda dye to preserve the color. Then the third time, it is then dipped into the freshly prepared indigo vat to give you the third color, which is the chocolate. So here I'm showing you two examples of anchor bai, which is another brown dye. These are just monochrome dyes on this main design field. But otherwise, when you have the addition of indigo, it gives you that chocolate here. And then you would unpick those areas that you want to be special featured in indigo blue and dye it again in indigo that you would get, for example, these motifs here. All right? You get these definitions of little bits of blue as highlights to your puakumbu. This is an antique Iban Klambi jacket, a wap cotton ikat with tapestry weave panel at the bottom. But as you can see, sorry, that if you look closely, the borders are defined by stripes of indigo, and indigo mixed with the red here has given you the chocolate. This is another technique known as the discontinuous supplementary weft of puak songkit. And again, where the green indigo, the unfermented indigo, used as accent in the threads of the weft. Now, what's very interesting is that in their old traditional daily attire, when they were topless, working in the fields and at home, they used the solid indigo on cotton. But the solid indigo is probably also mixed with <coughs> the enkudu, the brown, to give you a darker blue. Whereas when you become a widow, in traditional sense, your pua kumbu, which is here, the pattern, then has the fringes deep in indigo to show that you are now a mourning widow. The totally blue cloth in the old days is known as puah jugam, which is supposed to be like the color of the honey bear. The honey bear, the sun bear in Sarawak, has a coating which looks like black, but if you look closely, it is actually a deep indigo color. So we revived this idea and created Silk Pwakumbu, totally in indigo, like the one that my friend uh, is wearing. I don't know where she has gone for tea, but she is wearing one. And this is the indigo. Plucked tarum leaves, freshly prepared tarum dye on a wooden trough, 
whereby half portion is fresh, half portion is in, soaked in warm water, mixed together, crushed, and then you add in the lime, which is pounded shell lime from the river. They gather the seashells or the river shells. They roast it, then they pound it into a powder. And you mix it in until you see the, the bubbles. Then you dip in the threads. So here is Nancy, another master weaver. This actually we were experimenting in the last uh, visit there to teach them another technique, which is shibori. So otherwise, this is how the men would wear the loincloth. The backstrap floor loom for weaving Iban Puakumbu look at the accent color of indigo. A remote agrarian community, there are rice planters on the hills. It's a long way to the city, up the rivers. First, you have to take the express boat, which are like landed jets in our big rivers for a few hours. Then you reach a town and then you transfer and then finally you have to go up the rivers. They've got a UNESCO Award of Excellence in 2000 and other prizes as well for their expert Puakumbu weaving. You can see here the accent color of blue. Kumbang, which is the legendary weaving goddess here, given that accent. Looks a bit like Medusa, but anyway, it's the expression of a crown. <coughs> Batang Sepapat, which is the tree of life motif. She won the grand prize at the International Textile Competition in Korea in 2006. Here, again, the fresh indigo expressed there. Here, a, a more contemporary piece by a younger weaver called Blue River, where this is the natural indigo. Silk Puakumbu in fashion. Miss Malaysia models the Puakumbu. We like to give it this you know, theme, the luxury of Sarawak style. Masdenia Tintoria natural dye. Wap Ikat of Iban. This is an Iban uh, girl who is showing off one of the silk pieces which we introduced back in 1986. More shows. This is from the show in Hyderabad. The Natural UNESCO Dye Symposium, I think the beginning of ISEN, back in Hyderabad. Dreamweavers. That's, you can see this clip on YouTube, the Dreamweavers of Rumagari. So they've painted the walls blue as well. <laughs> An indigo longhouse. So I just introduce you my latest hand stamped Sarawa indigo leaves on Japanese shibori silk upcycling shibori and this is the size of the leaves hand stamped to create the patterns. Cut and then fitted in to flow with the shibori to create another design. Cut and then hand stamped to create tattoo patterns on the silk. Again tattoo patterns. It's wonderful because, excuse my expression Dominic, I say this is the most efficient, effective way of squeezing all the dye out of your leaf because there's no wastage. Because the entire dye is on the jacket and is covered with another cloth and the residue dye goes on to the other piece of textile on top so everything is taken out of each leaf. And the wonderful thing also for me in doing this is to realize whether you're rich or poor, you sacrifice your dye. But if you are a good plant, well fertilized, your colors are very rich. If you are very malnourished, you give poor colors. It's true, same of human beings. The Green Indigo Collection. This is in my fashion show for the Mercedes Benz. So this is the year of the cockerel in Chinese calendar, so I created a green cockerel. <laughs> then I cut it into strips and then pound it on to cottons and silks. And then these are my shades of blue from unfermented Iban indigo. 
Thank you very much. This is one of the pieces that I had created. And then I've got more samples here, which I will show later because we don't have the time right now, but of a break. But here, more important to advertise and welcome you if you have the time. First to third December next month, the World Ikat Textile Symposium and event in Kuching, Sarawak, Ties That Bind. Please come. We have a website there, which is witsweft.org. Thank you very much. <laughs>